Are you filming? Oh, uh, good. What's that, um, what's that movie? The Other Guys? You are the guy who marries uh, Will Ferrell's ex, the blonde one. And he's like, Steven. shaved. That's you. That's some Arnold Palmer. <laughs> yeah. That's you. Arnold Palmer alert. Arnold Palmer alert. Who wants some Arnie Palmies? You probably think because of the beard that I'm really hairy. But uh, I'm not shaved. Alan! You get back here! You make love to my wife! That's definitely you. Put that in the video. <laughs> hey Josh, do you only wrap all light weights? Oh yeah, well I actually do, because otherwise I wouldn't win all the time, and then what would be the point? Like, what are you talking about? Of course I want to make it as unfair as possible. It's, it's, oh that was the, uh, that was the most recent comp video, wasn't it? The Jujiteros ones. It's like, yeah, that's hilarious. Unbelievable that they didn't come to the conclusion that it was an absolute division. And the fact that all the fat heavyweights who are around my size have gone on diets. Mysteriously, because for the last 10 years that hadn't happened. Someone goes, see HPU might pull them out, but I pull submissions. I'm the one who gets submitted. That was actually genuinely funny. Yeah. I think I laughed at that at the start. I pull submissions, like I pull getting armbarred. That was pretty funny. Hey mate, do you always grab the featherweights? What did I say to that? Well, your answer should have been, that's the reason why I can't fight your mom, because she's too close to my weight division. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be YouTube friendly, but I agree. So yeah, if that kid's watching, what Luke said. Josh takes performance enhancing drugs. Also, Josh makes brown belt in three years. Okay. Yeah, it's true. But also two years, not three. <laughs> Get the story straight. 23 months. Yeah, exactly. It's weird. There's always there's always cycles of performance enhancing drug talk. Especially when Yeah, especially when Gordon starts to get more popular in the About Oh yeah, why? I think that if Usada steps in to like like fight pass events for example, it's going to ruin fight pass events. Or if you're competing on fight pass invitational and you're getting randomly tested. That means now that you're the only person in the sport who's getting tested and a person who's competing on flow grappling, for example, or one championship isn't getting tested. That means you have to be competing natural for, for those specific events when everyone else in the sport can be on, 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 on PEDs. That puts you at an extreme disadvantage for no reason unless you're getting paid absorbent amounts of money to not, like if you're exclusive, then it makes sense because you wouldn't compete in the other events anyways. Right. But if you're not exclusive and you want to compete on a flow show, like if I have an event uh, in July, like I'm competing natural on this one event, and then this other guy's been on an eight-week cycle for me, that like two weeks later, like it's a, it's a, it makes it makes a difference. Well, first of all, you have to you have to pay for the testing. The tests are upwards of a thousand dollars each, and they're randomized, which means you have to pay people to go see people. Then you have to instill the USADA program where you have to alert them of your location multiple times a week and we had to do it in the nrl we had to let them know obviously they just rock up the training when we're all going to be there it's very convenient but jiu-jitsu doesn't really have that because they have other responsibilities and media days they could be here for competitions could be here could be in brazil blah 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 blah. it's such a huge headache and athletes don't want to go through that you hear about it in the ufc all the time they wake them up at 6 a.m on the weight cut day they wake them up at six o'clock in the morning what are you doing do you not know anything about what it means to be an athlete? This is crazy. It's unbelievable. But to think that sport in general, like professional sport in general, isn't riddled with it already. People always say, oh, what if we had the doping Olympics? Well, we do, that's exactly what it is. Like the Tour de France at the times that they're doing it now is not humanly possible without it. If, if you wanna be in the top 10, 20, 30, not possible and people want to whinge and bitch about Lance Armstrong, he was just a scapegoat. They, they had to retroactively test, I believe it was all the way back to like 50 or 70th place for that to be considered a natural athlete. And it's like, cool, but also, you, like you came 70th. Who cares? That, that's a sport. 
that's a sport with way more money into it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much I get paid for Tour de France, but... Um, the money into the sport. But then take this for example, right? This is, this is my argument against it. Shooters in the Olympics take beta blockers to slow the heart rate down. Yeah. And archery people, they all do that sort of stuff. Formula One people take nootropics. And pretty much everybody in sport takes something to aid their performance. Why not open the playing field and just say, use whatever you need to, to perform? That's it, it's very simple. Then there's these arguments about, oh, these countries wouldn't be able to afford it, or it wouldn't be a level playing field because of the, the amount of dollars that they could spend on supplements. Well, okay, so the Kenyan Olympic team versus the US Olympic team, what about state-of-the-art facilities? What about the US guys have access to the best cryotherapy, the best oxygenation chambers, like the, the things they sleep in? They have the state-of-the-art uh, shoes, kits, all that sort of stuff. What, what about that? Do we have to limit that as well? Like those swimming suits that came out in 2008 in Beijing, do we have to limit those as well? Like, because where do you draw the line for performance enhancing? Like, are they allowed to wear spikes that can only be afforded by the Kenyan team? Because now we're pandering to the minority. What's going on here? Like, where do you draw the line? Where do you separate it out and say, well, you can't do this, you can do this. So that's where it gets like a little bit of a gray subject matter. And it's not meant to be fair. It's high level sport. If you take every little advantage away, you don't get the Michael Jordans, you don't get the Usain Bolts, you don't get these people. Like, what if you said you had to be underneath six foot five to run the 100 meter? Because it'd be unfair if you had a stride length that was longer than everybody else's. Where are we, get, where are we getting to? Yeah. Yeah, in the NBA. Or you have to be under 300 pounds, which he never could have done at seven foot six or whatever he is, or seven foot two or three or whatever he is. Yeah, and all the guys in the NBA are on growth hormone. They play 82 games a year on hardwood floor. That's ruinous for your body. That's not good. Knees, shins, ankles, the way that they're constantly landing at velocity, they're all on growth hormone. That's a crazy amount of games. 82 games a year. And it's like a very compact season. I think it's from February to November, or November to February. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's October to February. Because I know the finals are like February, March-ish. Because the NFL is the opposite. They go the, the other way around. Um, but yeah, all the guys in the NFL on performance energy drugs, um, heaps of plays in tennis. It's, it's ridiculous to assume that Jiu-Jitsu is the only sport. It's crazy. Well, also, <coughs> Can you imagine bringing USADA into a grappling industry? Oh yeah, it's hilarious. What the fuck are you about? Well, you couldn't even pay all the officials. People are saying that it's retarded, it's not thought through. No, it's not. It's not. It, it would actually, to some degree, it would even the playing field. Because you could train harder, you could train longer, you could recover better, you could, mine, you could minimize genetic deficiencies, essentially. Like, if you actually took the punch, you'd be a lot stronger, you could recover faster, your mindset would probably be a little bit better. And then you could nullify the gap between someone like me and someone like you. Because if, what's, what's the, the disadvantage for me having an athletic career and you not, and we're both clean. Like the still a substantial difference. Yeah, you're at one end of the spectrum. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So do we like nullify those differences as well? What about the, the Odell Beckham Juniors of the world who are just extremely fast? Or they have amazing reflexes. Where do we, you could, you could do the best job you can. And some argument is to be said that doping is one of those things, but just allow it. Anyway, see you in the next one. <laughs>